I'm Peggy. Uh, my first foray into doing this and uh, taking on a, a formative opponent here. And I came upon the Schmodown back in April, and uh, I told my brother about it because he was he's the best at he was the best at movie trivia and uh, big in the WWE. And I figured it would be right up his alley. And he became a huge fan. Unfortunately, he died in July. So the reason I'm doing this right now tonight is uh, in his honor. I probably won't do as well as he would have done, but uh, I'm gonna give it my best shot. So here we go. What's up, guys? It's the Irishman. I'm back again. Except this time, I'm not in Phantom. I'm not in classics. I'm in Warzone. This is going to be fun. Uh, I've turned over a new leaf where I no longer face my opponents. I just face myself. It's me and that whiteboard, and that's all I care about. Uh, Peggy, best of luck, but uh, I got to beat myself. So that's what it's worth. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex, a movie war zone. Uh, we got two debut players going up against each other. We got Doug Castle going up against Peggy Gubbins. I think this is going to be a really good match. Uh, but before we go to our competitors, I want to go to my co-host. Uh, the best fandom team partner there is Mr. Thomas Scully, Mischief Manager on the desk. How are you doing, Scully? Yo. <laughs> It's a Your List Sucks reference. If you watch it, uh, you know all about it. But, yeah, we got a great debut match. Uh, you and I did a, a debut match a few weeks ago. Adam Collins and Scott Harvey. That was a phenomenal match. I love debut matches. We get to see a little bit of what each new competitor brings into the Warzone ring. Uh, Peggy and Doug. Uh, I've seen Doug before in Classics. He's a really good competitor. Uh, Peggy, I don't know all, all that much about. But uh, here's hoping she can bring a lot to the table a lot of good knowledge and hopefully we have as good a match um on our hands to tonight as we had for scott and adam yeah definitely i think uh the, these are two players who have both uh played over in full metal classic over on full metal and uh they, they've both done really well and uh doug we've seen over here in multiplex not on war zone but over in fandom uh, he, uh, he had, he's had a decent run over there, actually. Uh, I think he's like two and one, or I don't know his actual fandom record because I don't really pay attention that much. Don't tell Coho or Tim. Um, it's okay. They don't, don't tell me I'm your partner. What? <laughs> Come on. Don't tell me I'm your partner. Come on. No, I, I pay attention to your matches. Come I just on. watch every little match. Okay. That's okay. Tim, Tim probably hasn't watched a Warzone match since the team title. I, he didn't well, that's his problem. I don't know if he's ever even seen a Warzone match, so let's be honest. Anyway, enough uh, jabbering. Let's get these two competitors in the ring. So, introducing first, making her multiplex movie Warzone debut, it is Peggy Gubbins. Hey, how's everyone doing? Doing great. Doing and good. making his multiplex movie Warzone debut, it is Doug. The Irishman Castle. What's up, guys? Let's get it going. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, so uh, it's going to work like this. Regular schmo down round one. Get eight different questions, two different categories. And if you get them all right, you get a bonus question. So, uh, Scully, would you like to give us your, our first question? Absolutely. Starting off, uh, your first question, guys, to kick this one off, is in the category of actors and actresses. These are people who have acted in films before. What actor has played a deputy, a U.S. president, and a water park employee? You know, these are all, I, these are three jobs I think are easily um, attainable, especially yeah. uh, U.S. president, I think. I think it's very tough to be a water park employee. Yeah, you got to go through a lot of rules and regulations, things like that. Five. Four, it's all political. Three. Two, one, pens down. Let's start with Peggy. Uh, he is as fine a dancer as he is an actor. I said Sam Rockwell. And Doug? I got that definitely wrong. John Rockwell. Ooh, Sam Peggy Rockwell gets that is point. Correct. So Peggy is on the board first. The next question comes in the category of. It won't Anna. be a shutout. <laughs> what? I said it won't be a shutout. <laughs> uh, in the category animated, your second question Steve Carell. Voices what kind of animal in Over the Hedge? I love this film. It's a very, it's a very underrated animated film. I love it. 
Like it's not like great, great, but it, it was a fun time back in. It's got it's got some great moments. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Doug. Turtle. And Peggy. I guess groundhog. He's a squirrel. He's a squirrel. Uh, Name is Sammy. I've never seen it. The most neurotic squirrel you will ever see. You'd recommend that one? Oh, absolutely. I feel like I've never seen it. I, I'm not sure if like you didn't grow up with it, if it would be good. Like I, I have nostalgia for it. Gotcha. Yeah. We're in the same boat there, Bowman. All right, guys. Question number three comes from the category of crime films. What is the first and last name of Al Pacino's character in the Godfather franchise? Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! No one will ever be able to pull off a good as a, a good as Al Pacino impression as Frank Caliendo. He he does the best Pacino impressions. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Peggy. One of the huge gaps in my movie repertoire. I've never seen the Godfather trilogy. I've Victor Corleone. Ooh, you got the last name right. Yeah, you got the last name right. Oh, you need the whole name. Corleone. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I thought you did yeah. the last name. Uh, we said first and last name. It's Michael Man. Corleone. Reminder. Ah, every that's right. Reminder both competitors that. that they have three repeats they can use to give themselves a little more. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yes, three repeats and a challenge. Uh, could have given me all of them. Your next question category of scores and soundtracks. What song does Bill Murray's character wake up to each morning in Groundhog Day? This is one of my all-time favorite films. Yeah, it's a good one. I, I think it definitely helps expand Murray's uh, range of movies a, as an actor. Oh, I think this is his best performance. Five. Hmm. It's Three. still Caddyshack, you know, in, in my opinion. But one, yeah. you love Caddyshack. Oh, uh, start with Duck. I do. I got you, babe. And Peggy. I've got you, babe. That is correct. Both got that one. Peggy's still in the lead there, two to one. Next question comes not, from not the too far from my hometown. Next question comes from <laughs> it comes from the category of comedies. Insert laughter here. <laughs> <laughs> laughter. What is the signature <laughs> drink of the dude in the Big Lebowski? All well, time that's classic. just like your opinion, man. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. You that more like this. I hate Fine. being left handed. I start erasing what I write. I I'm left handed too. I'm, I'm lucky too. too. Southpaw. Ah. Okay. Let's so start frustrating. With... Peggy. Me? Yeah. It was a white Russian. And Doug. White Russian. Both correct. There we go. Oh, both have hit their stride. All right. All right your next question comes in the category of action adventure. Which actor plays Gabriel Cash in Tango and Cash? This is an okay movie. This is my dad's least favorite movie of all time. Least favorite? Interesting. Yeah, he hates this movie, and I have no idea why. Huh. It's not great, but it's it's a fun time for It's Three. a weird movie to just despise. One. Pens down. Let's start with Peggy. I put Sylvester Stallone. And Doug? And I put the other one, Kurt Russell. Doug is correct. It is we have a tie game. It was either one the, or the other. It was it a 50-50 shot. 50-50 shot. Yeah. All right. Our, right now. Your pen ultimate question comes in the category of movie quotes. Finish the famous quote from the 1970 film Love Story. Love means never having to blank, and we need three words. Three words. Uh, yeah, this is uh, ne- never, never saw this movie, ne- never, never even heard of it. Oh, wow, really? Five, yeah, four, three, two, one, pens down. Let's start with Doug. Live without you. And Peggy. 
I've never seen it, but I have seen the movie Now and Then where they're watching it and it's never having to stay. You're sorry. That is correct. Penny that is correct. Once again, so we get into four, four to three, four to three in favor of Peggy. Yes, four to three. We have our final question in the category of directors. What was the directorial debut of Spike Jones? Pretty good director. Yeah, no, he's made some of my favorite films. Yeah. Her, her was, eh, I'm actually in the minority. I, I didn't enjoy her that much. Eh. Five, four. Can I get a repeat? Ah, uh, yes. That'll be the first repeat for Peggy. Category directors, what was the directorial debut of Spike Jones? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Peggy. I guessed higher learning. And Doug. I could only pull one to mind because I know it's wrong, but uh, where the wild things are. That's also incorrect. We were looking for Bean oh. John Malkovich. John you said Spike yeah, Jones. John yes. You said Spike, Spike Jones. Jones. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. That has to it's go down on the altar. I mean, I have her right up here on my on my oh. DVD wall. <laughs> Let's chalk it up to rookie jitters. Rookie it's jitters. okay. Uh, as far as uh, moments <laughs> like that, Scully uh, I pr is pretty sure that I have you beat there with what does a triceratops look like? Uh, I once said that in a match because I was very deprived and very hungry. And I was like, God, what does a triceratops wow. look like? Okay. Hey, how you doing, Wes? Here is our lovely wheel from WheelDecide.com, everyone's favorite, the heel of the year, the biggest heel in this community. Uh, and on our lovely wheel tonight, we have Wes Craven, sports movies, 2000s comedies, 2000s rom-coms, Movie release dates, Oscars, movie quotes, musicals, and spinners and opponents' choice. So, Peggy, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin for first or defer? I will defer to my good man over here. Okay, Doug, this will be your spin. Oh! That's not right. Okay, right. Peggy, what would you like to give him? Ooh, strategy. Choice. Definitely winning the heel deer now. You need to take the categories <laughs> again. I can read them off. Uh, yeah, actually, can we run through those just to make sure I got them all? Yeah. So, musicals, movie quotes, Oscars, movie release dates, 2000s rom coms, 2000s comedies, uh, post 1990s sports movies, your, your sports movie category, and Wes Craven. Let's go see how well, how, how well-rounded he is. Let's go musical. Okay, Doug, uh, your category will come in the category of musicals. Uh, Thomas, would you like to give Doug his questions in musicals? Uh, absolutely. Okie doke. All right, Doug, your first question in the category of musicals. What actress plays Grace, personal assistant and love interest to Jamie Foxx's Will Stacks in 2014's Annie? I want to say it so bad, but I don't know if it's her. Uh, multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Cameron Diaz, B, Mila Kunis, C, Rose Byrne, or D, Jennifer Garner. Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne is correct for a point. I hate myself. Tying, I hate myself. Tying the game myself. for. All right. Question two in musicals. In which city is fame set? New York City. Correct for two more points. Yeah. All right. All right. Question number three in musicals. In what film does a character sing the song Where is Love whilst trapped in an, in an undertaker's basement? Multiple choice. Okay. Your options are A, Sweeney Todd, B, Into the Woods, 
C, Phantom of the Opera, or D, Oliver? Can I get a repeat, please? Of uh, the question or the options? Of the question. Okay, so option. that is... Yeah, so you that is your we'll repeat. A repeat of the questions or the options? Do you want both or... Yeah, yeah both, please. Okay, so that's your first repeat. In what film does a character sing the song, Where is Love, whilst trapped in an Undertaker's basement? And your options are A, Sweeney Todd, B, Into the Woods, C, Phantom of the Opera, or D, Oliver? Oliver. That is correct for a point. Wow. He is... Nicely done. Finagling his way through this round. Just little, like I'm crawling on military. Your <laughs> pen ultimate question in musicals. What 2010s musical included the songs Something's Got a Hold on Me, A Guy What Takes His Time, and You Haven't Seen the Last of Me? Give me multiple choice. Your options are A, Jersey Boys, B, Burlesque, C, A Star is Born, or D, Sparkle? Burlesque. Another point. Wow. Well done, you sir. Category. All right. Last question I in musicals. I'll say that. In, last question in musicals. 2012's Rock of Ages centers around a club in Los Angeles named what? Multiple choice. Okay, your options are A, The Viper Room, B, C, B, G, B, C, Whiskey A Go Go, or D, The Bourbon Room. A. A is incorrect. Peggy, for a one point steal. Uh, I'm going to go D, The Bourbon Room. The Bourbon Room is correct for a point. All right, so at the end of Doug's round, he gets himself up to eight. A pretty good round, considering he got a bonus oh, choice. But Peggy, but Peggy, with that one-point steal, gets himself up to five. I'm sorry, gets herself up to five. So it's eight to five going into Peggy's round two. Okay, so this will be Peggy's spin. Scott Mance's favorite category, movie release date. <laughs> oh, no, we're spinning again. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, away from it's, uh, you know, it's not for everyone. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Oscars. Oscars. Ben Bateman. Ooh. The Academy yeah. Awards. Ouch. All right, let's go. Okay, Peggy, your first question in the category of Oscars. How many... Of the four Oscars that Armageddon was nominated for, did it win? Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, zero, B, one, C, two, D, four. I'm going to go C, two. Incorrect. Doug for the one point steal. Zero. That is correct. For there we go. Maybe that got sound editing or something. Next question for the glory of Oscars. Renee Zelliger's third Oscar nomination for her performance in what 2003 film? I'm going to guess Chicago. Incorrect. Doug for the two-point steal. Bridget Jones, a Bridget Jones Diary. Also incorrect. We're looking for the one that she won it for, Cold Mountain. Oh, Ouch. Next question. The Beatles song Let It Be won Best Original Song at the Oscars for films released in what year? Multiple choice. A, 1968. B, 1969. C, 1970. D, 1971. My gut says 68. I'm going to go to A, 68. Incorrect, Doug, for the one point steal. Can I hear the options again, please? Yes. A, 1968, B, 1969, C, 1970, D, 1971. 69. Also incorrect. We were looking for 1970. Ah, all right. 
Your next question, Alejandro Gonzalez in Yuritu's first Oscar nomination for Best Director was for what film? I'm sorry, you cut out. I'm going to need to repeat. I'll use oh, that yeah. kind of. I yeah, use one more. repeat there. Uh, Alejandro Gonzalez in Yuritu's first Oscar nomination for Best Director was for what film? I'm going to have to go multiple choice again. Okay. A. Amoros Peros. B. 21 Grams. C. Babel. D. Birdman. I'm going to say Babel. That is correct for one point. She's on the board in round two. And your final question. Alexandra Desplat has won two Oscars for Best Original Score. One for The Shape of Water and the other for what film? Uh, yeah, I'm going to need multiple choice on this one. Okay. A, The Queen. B, The King's Speech. C, Argo. D, The Grand Budapest Hotel. D, The Grand Budapest Hotel. That is correct. Wow. There we go. So Peggy gets two right up really, really uh, critical points there. So the total come out of round two, I believe, is nine to seven. Nine to seven. Nine to seven as we go into round three. Round three uh, is our pick your poison round. We're going to have six different categories on the board, and our competitors will pick what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four-pointer. Uh, we will let them pick their categories right now, and we'll get back to you right now. Okay, and we are back into round three. Uh, they have picked what they want for their one, two, three, and four point categories. Uh, Peggy has picked her one in crime, her two in musical, her three in anim animated, and her four in comedy, whereas Doug has picked his one in musical, his two in animated, his three in comedy, and his four in horror. So, Scully, uh, since Peggy is down by two, uh, you will give her her question first for one point in the category crime. Okay, Peggy, your first question in round three, your one pointer in the category of crime. Who directed all three films in the Oceans trilogy? Oh, shit. I am blinking. I'm guess I'm gonna have to go. Uh, Two. Don't. One. Danny Boyle. Incorrect. We were looking for Steven so Steven oh, Soderbergh. Soderbergh. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. So we still got nine more points left on the board. <laughs> okay, so we will now go to your two pointer, which is going to be in the category of musicals. Okay. Rachel Lee Cook. Tara Reed and Rosario Dawson are a girl band in what film? Oh shoot! Uh, the Pussycats. Oh, uh, hey, no, hey, um, hey, hang on, not final answer. Um, Josie and the Pussycats. That is correct for final two answer. points. Okay. So you have tied the game at nine. So we go back, to Doug. There's one point question. The category of musicals. Who plays rival barber Aldofo Pirelli in Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street? Sasha Baron Cohen. That is correct for one point. All right. Done. So Doug back in the lead here. Uh, so we go over back over to Scully and Peggy for three-pointer in animated. All right, Peggy, your three-pointer. Give me in the category of animated. What was the subtitle of 2001's theatrically released Final Fantasy movie? <laughs> Not the animated I was expecting. I was expecting something Disney or Pixar. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've got nothing. I could sit here and do my repeats, but I got nothing. Any sort of guess? Final Fantasy, uh, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I don't know. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. We're I wish it was correct. 
We 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 were looking for the the spirits within the spirits within. I would watch a that, movie called Final Fantasy Electric. That movie. was my second guess. <laughs> so would you stay with Peggy with her four pointer in the category of comedy? All right, Peggy, you have to uh, hit this, otherwise yep. Doug will win the match. All right, your four your four pointer in comedy. In ten things I hate about you. What rule does Bianca and Kat's father put in place at the start of the film? Bianca can date when Kat dates. That is correct for four big points. Correct for four points. So Peggy is at 13. Doug is behind at 10. Massive, Doug. massive pull for Peggy. Yes, yeah, she needed that four points to stay in the game. Okay. You're, Doug, your two pointer in the category of animated. Which action icon voices Spike in Rugrats Go Wild? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Incorrect. We were looking for Mr. John McClain himself, Bruce Willis. Uh, I would have guessed Arnie too. Okay, so your three pointer in the category of comedy. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> what job do Charlie Machine and Emilio Estevez have in 1990s Men at Work? Garbage men. Sorry, what? Garbage men. That is correct for three points. So we are, and we tied. have a tie game. So, oh, could we, could, 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 we, could we be? Can we be sniffing sudden death again? If Doug hits, then he wins. If he misses, we go into sudden death. Wow. So, Doug, you're fourteen <sighs> in the category of horror. What MCU actor made their film debut as Tommy Doyle in Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers? Paul Rudd. And your winner. Wow. Doug the Irishman. Cassell. I love Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, <laughs> I want to just kiss you. You're a beautiful human being. I even knew that one. And a vampire. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, well, uh, that does uh, end the match here, but we will go to post-match interviews, starting with Doug. Doug, how are you feeling about this match? Uh, I owe Paul Rudd a sandwich or something. Paul Rudd hit me up. I got you, bro. Um, no. Peggy did an amazing job. Uh, thank you guys for having me. After doing the play-ins, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to play a match this season. Um, but I'm super glad that I got to be in this match. And Peggy, without a doubt, uh, you definitely pushed me to my limits. I did not have a great first round. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just uh, super thank you. Thank you for you guys having me. Yeah. And over to Doug, or to Peggy, uh, back from Doug, now over to Peggy. Peggy, you played a great game, uh, just kind of, you know, uh, Oscars really hurt you in round two. Ah, they hurt me unbelievably, and plus the rookie jitters of confusing Spike Jones for Spike Lee, that one really stung as well, but congratulations to Doug. Doug played a great match, he deserved the win, I'm happy for him, and you know what, I'll be back. Yes. Yeah, we'll be back uh, probably not this season, but next season we'll get you back. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and you know, Owen, you're you're definitely a dangerous Owen one here. I, I don't envy the uh, Owen one player who has to uh, take you on. Uh, so good yeah, yeah. What? good things come to, good things come to those who wait. So definitely, just wait. definitely, just wait. Yeah. Well, uh, that does end our match here. Uh, I think this was a really good uh, showing for both competitors, really good debut. Uh, you could definitely tell there was some of those uh, rookie jitters from both competitors, but they both got over it pretty quickly, and uh, I think they, they both played a, a really even good game.
Yeah, absolutely. I think this is this was one of those matches where I don't think the competitors, I I don't think their full potential came out until that round three. Both Peggy and Doug hit their uh, incredibly difficult four pointers. Um, yeah. D- Douglas Castle, I think, will be a a sleeper contender for Warzone next season. I I I've, I've seen what he's done in classics. He put on a great showing today. He started out a little rough, but he rallied. He worked his way through musicals, and he really. He, he hit his stride there in round three. And Peggy, like you said, she's going to be a dangerous own one for anyone who plays her. So I don't envy any competitor who has to play them um, in the near future. Both competitors, I think, could have the potential to be in a title race soon. Um, but we'll wait until next season to uh, uh, decide all that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that does end it here. Uh, keep watching Multiplex, keep watching Movie Warzone. We got a ton of uh, debut matches coming down the pipeline. Uh, this guy over here, uh, he's going to be making his debut very soon against one Ruben Colon. That'll be a very, very entertaining match. Uh, we got a couple other debut uh, matches. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but we got a lot coming up here. And we also have, of course, uh, bigger matches. Uh, we've got a number one contender match coming up down the pipeline pretty soon. I don't know exactly because I don't know when this is getting released. I think it might be Monday. I'm not sure. But that being said, from Doug, from Peggy, from Scully, and from myself, Caleb, a little Bo Boatman, this has been Multiplex on Movie Warzone. Uh, bye bye Stay classy, San Diego. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>